Good afternoon, my beloved student. How are you doing today? I believe that you enjoyed your weekend. It is nice to, nice to start on a good note. We are going to look at the topic, Introduction to Basic Electronics. Alright, so get ready and uh, let's continue to learn. Now, our learning objectives for today, we focus on the following. Number one, should be your aim to define a mission and explain the principle of thermonic photoelectric code cathode emission. Should be able to distinguish between primary and secondary emission and they identify the components of electric circuits. Definition of emission. Emission is defined as the release or escape of electrons from the surface of a matter. Note the keyword release or escape of what? Electron for the surface of matters. Bear in mind that all matters possess electrons in them. It is the movement of electrons in them that make matters to be a good conductor. So, when one or more conditions is experienced on matters, for example, when you release them to heat or expose them to heat to sunlight, any other physical factors, they will begin to emit electrons. Also, if matters are dislodged by a very higher force, they will emit electrons. And you know that the continuous flow of electrons is what brings about current. Now let's move to types of emission. Types of emission. Number one, we have thermonic emission. The word thermonic is formed from thermo. So thermo means it. So this method of emission of electron is obtained by heating the metal surface directly or indirectly to free or liberate electrons. So that is thermonic emission. So the metal that is heated is directed. Sorry, the metal that the heat is directed to for the purpose of removing electrons is called the metal electrode. So if you have any metal, any platinum metal, okay, that is the metal electrode. Once it is able to emit electrons. So the electrode is heated by metal heater in order to increase the temperature above room temperature. So this enables electrons to escape from the electrodes. So note that the higher the, the temperature, the faster and greater will be the rate of electrons emission. So the electrode is also called the emitter. So note that the matter that emits electrodes and uh, that emits electron is also known as metal electrode we can also call it a meter. All right? Now look at this odd filament as well we have an electric ion or in cooking plate, I mean odd plate. You see that when it is subjected to I eat, which bring about changes in temperature, the electrons will begin to escape from the surface of the of the matter. And the whole process is what we call thermonic emission. Now let's move to photoelectric emission. Photoelectric emission. The word photo means light. Okay, when you hear photo, it means light. So photoelectric emission occur when light falls on the metal surface causing electrons to be emitted. 
Photoelectric emission is the vibration of electrically charged particle from the matter when light falls on it. Take a look at this picture. This picture here, what we have here is a matter. Alright? Then inside matter we have two types of electrons. The negative electrons and the positive electrons. Okay? In the process of exposing it to light rays, to light rays, okay, the matter gets heated and all the negative ions begins to escape and they are electrons, which brings about electron emission in the presence of photoelectric emission. Now, photoelectric cell. So that's what we call photoelectric cell. It is a cell that works on the principle of photoelectric emission. Okay? So a photoelectric cell works on the principle of electric charge produced when a cell containing photosensitive materials is exposed to light rays. So all the photosensitive materials when exposed to light rays, okay, the electrons generated during this process is what we convert to cell, which can be used to power many devices such as automatic doors, automatic gates, and other materials. The photoelectric cell is employed in operating burglary alarms, traffic light controls. I said it before that it can be used to power automatic doors. Okay. Now let's move to cold cathode emission. Cold cathode emission. This is the use of energy stored in electric or magnetic field to liberate electrons from the metal atoms. So, cold cathode emission is achieved from one or two electrodes when there is a sufficient potential difference between the electrodes. And a good example of device, or let me say appliance that use cold cathode emission is this bar, fluorescence bar. Okay. Now let's move to primary and secondary emission. What is primary emission? It is the use of heat and sunlight in the emission of electrons from the metals. There are two types of heating. One direct heating method, and this is in heating of metal electrode by connecting electric current to the metal electrode which itself can be in form of wire okay so in think about your bulb okay you look at the bulb bulb has two terminals positive and ne negatives okay think of lamp holder too lamp in lamp holder you have conductor that runs to the two terminals which are connected to the bulb okay and in the process the bulb is heated directly to liberate electrons that is direct heating method now the second one is indirect heating method what is this one in indirect heating method you have element placed inside another metal electrode and the metal electrode is heated instead of eating the metal itself okay for example i want to eat aluminium i place it inside zinc or platinum and i'm eating the platinum or zinc directly instead of eating aluminium which I want it to emit electron so that is indirect eating 
method. The two aims are the two aim at emitting electrons. Now, secondary emission. What is this secondary emission? Here we use kinetic energy to free electrons. Of course, you know that what kinetic energy is. Kinetic energy is the energy that is obtained from substance that is in motion. Okay? And for example, now we can bombard the surface of metal electrodes with sufficient electric charges. In the process, the, metal, the electron in the metal electrodes will be dislodged. Okay? And once they are dislodged, some of them get escaped and move freely in the process. Now let's move to another section, electronic circuit. Electronic circuit. An electronic circuit is composed of individual electronic components such as resistors, transistors, capacitors, inductors, diodes, we have connected wires, we've got conductor or traces, we have bulb and other components that are not mentioned here. Okay, the aim of electronic circuit is to ensure that current flow through the component of the circuit in order to carry out particular function it is designed to do. Now, what are the components of electric circuit? Number one is semiconductor. A semiconductor is a substance which is intermediate between metal and non Meta and is able to conduct electricity at room temperature more readily than an insulator, okay, but less readily than a meta. Okay, so what we're saying is that for every semiconductor, it is stronger, good, and better than every non meta but it is not as good as a conductor when compared to a metal. So, semiconductor, I've said it that it's in between conductor and insulator. Since all conductors are metals, and all insulators are non-metal. So, good examples of semiconductors that have high quality are germanium and silicon. And you know, germanium and silicon, they are very important, especially when it comes to computer system. Very good in the making of computer. Look at television chips. The chips in the television in computer are made from silicon. So they are very important and the engineers, I mean electrical engineers, pay so much premium on them. Semiconductors are using crystal diode as rectifier elements of ten elements for obtaining direct current from alternative current supplies. And look at it, this is a good this good image of semiconductor. Now another component is resistor. Resistors. The word resistor means to oppose something. So there is the opposition offered to the free flow of electric current through a conductor is called resistance. So the ability of resistors to impede or slow down the flow of electric current is resistance. So we have different type of resistance. We have fixed resistance and we have a variable resistance. Okay. For fixed resistance, it means if there, if it is if it is if it has a given numerical value, it can be changed. But for variable, you can switch from one value of resistance to another. You can change from one ohm to two ohms, three ohm to four ohms, five ohm to six ohm down the line. Okay. 
Some metals like silver, copper, offer very little opposition to the flow of electrons, while material like wood, mica, and cotton hold onto their free electrons more tightly. So, and the symbol of resistance is ohms. Look at this, this is a symbol. Okay. There are two types of resistance. Uh, resistor. I've said that before. Fixed and what? And variable resistance. The next component of a circuit is capacitor. So, a capacitor is divided as stores electric charges. The function is to store electric charges which can be used after capacitor has two plates negative and the positive the two plates are arranged side by side leaving a gap between them and that gap is what we call it dielectric okay these two metal plates are also called electric i mean positive and negative plates they are also called electric and once the circuit is connected to direct current the two plates will be charged okay the two plates will be charged okay and when it is fully charged the direct current connected to it will start flowing and then you can continue to use the capacitor okay if you want to waste the charges in it i mean you want to discuss the charges in it all you just need to do is to bridge the two plates terminals. These are different types of uh, capacitors. In case you see any electronic circuit, you should be able to identify it. Transistors. A transistor is an electronic device consisting of a semiconductor and at least three electrodes. It has three electrodes and they are used to amplify small electric current. So transistors are usually made of silicon and germanium. The three electrodes are collector, base and emitter. So transistor in a radio amplifies small currents until they are big enough to drive a loudspeaker. Take a look at this. The this is I mean this figure is a transistor. This is an electrode. The first metal you can see here is an electrode called emitter. Then this one is called the middle metal is called base. And the last one is called the collector so emitter base collector cell you know what says when you have more than one battery connected together you call them cells and the function is to provide electrical energy across the circuit so we have connected wires i call them conductors then we have traces you see if you open the component of radio system or television system you will see it you will see traces okay it is on the traces that different components are connected they don't use a they don't make use of wire but you see that all the components with diode uh, capacitor uh, resistor they are connected in definite pattern along the trace Okay, light bulb is another example to give light. Then look at this circuit. What I have here, this is open circuit and this closed circuit. What we mean by open circuit is a circuit in which there is a break in the flow of electrons around it. And as such, when circuit is open, it will not generate complete flow of electrons. So here, look at it here now. We have light bulb here. The battery to generate electrical power or electrical energy and the switch here it is off that is why it is opened and the, bar, the bulb will not give any light but in the case here let me second one here where the switch is closed 
you see that current will start flowing from the battery to throughout the circuit to the bulb and the bulb will light up now having gone through this lesson i believe that you should be able to answer the following questions number one what is electronic circuit state seven component of electric electric circuit and its function two briefly explain the following one photoelectric emission two thermionic emission three cold cathode emission then lastly you should, be, you should be able to differentiate between primary and secondary emission judge this question down write the answers and you can send it to me then i want you to know more about this please ensure to go through this website okay go through this on youtube watch exciting videos that will tell you more about this then thank you for your time and enjoy your day happy listening ensure you abide by lockdown rules and do what is needful to keep yourself safe and healthy god bless you bye bye see you next time